As New York Governor Andrew Cuomo attempts to shift the focus back onto his governing, one of the women accusing him of sexual harassment is revealing new details about the governor's alleged behavior. Charlotte Bennett met with investigators working for the state attorney general's office for more than four hours yesterday. She says Cuomo frequently made suggestive remarks about the size of his hands and created a, quote, sexually hostile work environment. Separately, last week, New York State Assembly announced it would open an impeachment inquiry into the sexual harassment claims against the governor and his administration's handling of coronavirus-related nursing home deaths. For more on this, let's bring in Marie French in Albany, New York. She's a reporter for Politico. Marie, thanks for joining us. So what do we know about that meeting and the information that Ms. Bennett provided? Well, so uh, great to be here. We know that uh, Charlotte Bennett met for four hours um, with investigators um, into this harassment claim she has made and uh, the harassment claims other women have made. Um, she says she provided 120 pages of, of documentary evidence to kind of back up those claims and, and provide some support for them. Um, and she spoke about you know the way the governor had talked to her and asked her about, um, you know, her sexual relationships, whether she was interested in having um, sex with older men and those other claims she's, she's made publicly. Um, she also, you know, her, her lawyer in a statement also called for, for other women and anyone who had, you know, witnessed anything in the office to, to come forward as well. So according to reports by the Washington Post and the New York Times, the governor's vaccine czar, Larry Schwartz, has been calling county executives to gauge their loyalty to Cuomo. That's what those papers are reporting. And then on Sunday, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio told Face the Nation that the governor is literally in the way of saving lives. Is there a concern, is there a significant concern that as the governor maybe fights for his own political survival, uh, there is intermingling of politics and the state's rollout of the co coronavirus vaccine program. And it, and it may very well sort of stymie things up a little. So um, yeah, the, there is definitely um, concern from, from some uh, segments of, of folks that that is a problem. I mean, uh, Larry Schwartz uh, has been you know, helping the governor out with the pandemic response since March when he came on to help with supply, medical supplies early on in the pandemic. Um, now he's, he's in charge of the vaccine and he did, um, he has admitted to calling county executives and having conversations with them. Um, some county executives said they viewed those questions about sort of their loyalty to Cuomo as um, very problematic because he's in charge of the vaccine rollout now. Um, so they've they've raised that concern certainly, and I think you see the governor um, really in public events pushing back against that perception. He had an event yesterday where he mm -hmm. appeared with um, Black faith leaders and community leaders on Long Island to you know promote the vaccine and urge people to, to continue getting it. There's a new poll from Siena College that shows half of registered voters in New York believe the governor should not resign immediately. That belief is particularly strong among a key part of Governor Cuomo's base, black voters, 61 percent of whom responded favorably to the governor. Meanwhile, a majority of the state legislature and several U.S. House Democrats have called on Governor Cuomo to resign. Uh, why were so many of the governor's political allies uh, ready to turn on him? I, you know, and the question is, of course, if they're turning on him, are they really allies in the first place? I think that's a that's a fair question to ask. Um, certainly, you know, obviously Schumer and Jill Brand, uh, New York's two senators, have called for him to resign. A very uh, large contingent of the House um, congressional delegation has has called for his resignation as well. Um, but he does still have, you know, folks who are saying, let's watch the investigation play out. Let's see what the attorney general find, finds. Let's see what the assembly impeachment inquiry you know, comes up with and um, let's wait and see. So, and you've seen um, President Biden has kind of sat on the sidelines and, and similarly, you know, said, let's wait um, for the full investigation to get a full vetting of these allegations by these uh, six women. Yeah, that was going to be sort of my next question that we did hear from the president over the weekend. And that's what he said. You know, he's going to wait for the outcome of the investigation. But he is sort of in a unique position that he could actually sort of intervene and um, at least sort of um, 
limit any kind of clash between Democrats, um, but he's choosing not to do so. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, it. they've had a long, Cuomo and uh, Biden have had a long relationship. I mean, um, some some people, you know, described as a friendship. Um, and for Biden to call for him to resign um, would really, I think, put put a nail in, in the coffin of, of Cuomo's political future um, in some ways. Um, but uh, as to as to why he's not calling for for Cuomo to resign, maybe he thinks you know let it play out. Maybe he really believes that you know the investigation will you know show more evidence and uh, get more information out there. Mm -hmm. All right, Marie French, thank you so much. Thank you.